Hi, I'm John Wilson, Senior Designer at Lutra, and I'm here today with Jonathan Church. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about fluoride. Um, fluoride's a pretty contentious issue in the news, especially here in New Zealand at the moment. But we're just going to take a broad look at uh, what it is and why it's used. And uh, so, yeah, John's going to talk us through that a little bit. What is fluoride and why is it used in what's treatment? Yeah, so fluoride is a natural substance. Um, it's present in the, in the environment, you know, naturally occurring. And what it does is it helps prevent um, tooth decay by making your teeth essentially stronger. How is fluoride dosed into the water? So fluoride's dosed like, in the same way that many other chemicals are, are dosed in water treatment. Um, it's specifically for fluoride, there's three common types that are used for dosing systems. Um, two of these types of powders, one of them um, sodium fluoride, um, that's less common in New Zealand, um, and slightly more common of the powders is sodium silica fluoride. There's also a liquid form, which is hydrofluorosilicic acid, um, and that's obviously a, a liquid, um, which is dosed into the, into the water. With the powder, powder forms, they are usually dosed with um, a, a hopper, um, using a screw feeder to deliver a measured mass of the powder um, into a to mix in essentially with a liquid. Um, sometimes it's done in a batch. Um, sometimes it's just mixed straight in with a liquid and dosed into the into the water treatment plant main flow. With the hydrofluorosilicic acid, um, as a liquid, that means that it can just be dosed directly using you know very accurate metering pumps um, into the water supply. So this is where the HFA is delivered. Um, there is a cam lock fitted with a, a electronic Cody tag. Um, so the tanker brings the HFA up here, it's within an abundant area, and then the driver will transfer the HFA through this pipe and into the bulk tank. The HFA is delivered through a pipe to this double skinned storage tank, bulk storage tank, and from here it's transferred into the day tank. So from the bulk tank, the fluoride is transferred into this day tank by a series of duty standby transfer pumps. This operation occurs once per day to make sure that only a day's worth of fluoride is present in this tank. And if the system asks to transfer, to do a transfer from the bulk tank to the day tank, more than once a day, an alarm is tripped indicating that the usage has been higher than it should be. On the transfer system, we have a series of safety features um, in the event of any kind of isolated valve. And from the day tank, the HFA is sucked through into these duty standby dosing pumps. So these pump through a, um, a series of fittings um, and are then measured by a downstream um, flow meter. This flow meter is rated for use with HFA because it has platinum electrodes. Underneath all of the equipment, we have this quite generous um, custom bund. Um, the intent of this is that it's underneath at least 99% of all the fittings within the system. So if a, a leak or a breakage occurs at any of the bends or fittings, um, then it will go into this bund. And a high level switch will indicate that there is a leak in the pipe work. We also have a very convenient wash down hose in the event of any HFA spills um, due to maintenance or unintended for unintended reasons, and a safety shower and eye wash. Um, so if anyone is exposed to HFA, they can immediately um, be washed down. With the, the powdered one, has that got more issues? Is, uh, I've, I've heard that there can be problems with, with clumping and things like that. Yeah, like with any, any chemical that's in a powder form, um, it, it is prone to, um, to block up if the, if the product is, is you know, lumpy as delivered. Um, it's also prone to blocking up if it's left in a place where it's exposed to moisture, um, which is obviously a problem because if you're feeding it in with a screw, um, that creates a bit of an issue. Um, so typically the screw feeder systems are in relatively dry, heated areas um, where there can be little moisture and usually in that case it, there's not that much of a problem. Does fluoride dosing affect other processes? Does it affect things like pH or anything like that? Yeah, it, it, it does. Um, you know, within a treatment plant, you add many different chemicals um, for many reasons to make the water safe to drink. 
um, and fluoride being a typically an acidic effect um, is it, it will reduce the pH of the water a little bit. Um, but in most treatment plants, they'll be increasing the pH from its its natural value anyway, um, to to protect concrete pipes and um, to keep the corrosiveness of the water down. So um, so yeah, its effect overall is relatively minor on the water. Are there any dangers associated with using um, fluoride in water treatment? Yeah, so when when it's properly controlled and dosed to the system, no, um, fluoride is relatively relatively safe. Um, it's as a chemical, um, it has its own dangers, um, like many of the chemicals that are used for many different reasons, not just in water treatment. Um, the 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 powder form of um, sodium fluoride and sodium silica fluoride is, is relatively dangerous, especially if inhaled or, or got on the skin. Um, but when it's diluted down and put into water, it's, it's totally fine. Um, and you know, in some places in the world, the concentrations of fluoride in the background in the water, the natural water, um, can be higher than what's used in um, drinking water. Um, the, the liquid form um, hydrofluorosilicic acid um, is obviously a liquid, so um, more prone to potentially leaking out and getting in places like any liquid, but in a properly designed system, um, again, it's relatively safe if you take the correct um, precautions. Um, in all the cases, you know, we, we always wear the correct PPE um, or personal protective equipment, you know, the, the face masks, um, the, um, the protection for the eyes, um, full suits, you know, every, all, everything that's needed, um, which reduces the risk to the minimum. Um, but as with any kind of health and safety risk, you want to eliminate it as far as you can, so you don't have to interact with the chemicals. Okay, so, and obviously you said um, when it's diluted to the right dilution, it's, it's fine, it's, it's mm. safe and it's healthy. So I guess there's a lot of controls in place at plants to yeah, to enable that. That's correct. So within New Zealand, um, the the current and the um, Tomata ROI guidelines and the old drinking water standards they set a maximum limit on the concentration of fluoride, which is 1.5 milligrams a liter. Um, that's considered the maximum allowable value. So. That's what's considered a, a bad dose. Um, a typical dose um, might, is in the range of 0.7 to 1, which is what the World Health Organization um, recommends for dental health protection. So um, yes, that's quite a tight range to control to, um, but it's no, it's, no more, it's no more difficult or different than many other chemical systems. Um, it just needs to be controlled precisely and have the right sort of um, overall um, shut down and critical control points and all those kind of things to make sure that overdoses um, can't occur. In terms of adding a fluoride treatment system to your plant, is it just a case of getting the hardware, getting the containerized system or the, the new system and just plugging it in, doing a bit of commissioning and, and away you go? With any, any chemical system within a treatment plant, you know, you want it to be very well controlled and all the risks of that chemical system understood and managed. Fluoride is a little bit different than many of the other systems because of the tolerance range of what's considered to be an overdose and what's considered to be an underdose. So in terms of that compared to any other chemical, um, you know, often many treatment plants haven't dealt with fluoride before, um, so there won't be many risk mitigation measures in place. And also the controls of the fluoride need to be extremely precise to maintain that within that dental health range, but no higher. So looking after the analyzers, looking after the equipment, um, making sure everyone understands and is trained on the system um, is obviously critically important um, to fluoride, making sure that it's done safely. So you need a, a whole set of good SOPs and O&Ms and everyone needs to be trained up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And in terms of the dosing itself, um, it's relatively simple um, because in a perfect world, a flow paste dose of fluoride will achieve a, a target residual. So that's the thing that um, everyone needs to keep in mind. You know, these kind of systems are um, in principle, it is a dosing system and the intent is to deliver a nice fixed dose of fluoride. Um, it's really about managing the risks um, about what happens if that system goes wrong um, or something is, is accidentally done to the system um, or something along those lines. Because in that case, it's quite easy to go into a place that you don't want to be, which is above the MAV. Yeah. So, I mean, any 
any council or organization that's going to add fluoride really needs to engage process engineers, um, not just to design the, the process, but then also to help them manage that risk and help them develop that documentation and training afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in, terms, of, in terms of the system itself, you know, you want to understand what the risks are in the system, what kind of measures you've got in place, and what kind of controls you've got, you know, be it PLC controls to take the right kind of steps if something isn't working quite right, um, or whether it's, it's um, you know, documentation controls about how to respond to something not being correct. I hope that cleared up some of the uh, questions people have around fluoride dosing in water treatment. Uh, but as ever, if you do have any questions around fluoride dosing or any other uh, treatment process in water or wastewater treatment, then uh, please get in touch with us here at Lutra. Thanks for watching. We'll be along with another video uh, in the near future. Thank you.